Hello dear viewers and welcome to another episode of A Perambulate with Picard. This episode of course is a little bit late because, well, it basically rained for 48 hours here in Sydney over the weekend and we do very much need the rain, but it was rainy and very, very windy so I didn't go out for a walk over the weekend. Uh, but I am here today to talk about Picard. Sorry about the wind, I'm walking through a bit of a wind tunnel. I'm here today to talk about Picard, episode three, The End is the Beginning. Now, uh, a few people I've spoken to, a few friends of mine, are not particularly enjoying the slower pace of Picard. I am still really liking it. We're getting to know these characters. It's a series that has the confidence of knowing it has a certain amount of episodes to run. I'm not going to mention how many episodes in this video because um, my fiancé is very much a spoiler phobe. He doesn't like hearing spoilers. He doesn't even want to know how many episodes this series is. So I'm not mentioning it, darling. Um, but they have the confidence of having a certain amount of episodes. They don't have to do what TV pilots have to do for broadcast, which is introduce all their concepts in episode one, or possibly episode two, or in a feature-length special it can introduce concepts over time. So we meet another new lead character in this episode, Captain Rios. And, uh, well, look, aside from the fact that he is a very attractive man, and I appreciate that, um, also he's a very interesting character. He is clearly set up as a rogue. He's an independent captain. He has his own ship. And he has crewed the ship with holograms of himself with slightly different accents. So is that a sign that he only trusts himself? Is that a sign that he's a narcissist? Are those two one and the same thing? Uh, it sets up an interesting character dynamic, especially seeing as he idolises Picard but doesn't want to let on that he idolises Picard. And I, I, in a way, I quite like that. Uh, well, I suppose we already have Agnes, who obviously idolises Picard and shows that. So, if we have another character who idolises Picard, we have to do something different with that, as we are doing with Rios. Agnes, of course, is back and uh, toting a gun. Not quite, go not sh quite sure where she got that Romulan disruptor rifle. Maybe, uh, maybe Laris threw it out into the corridor. Um, and I like that Agnes... Well, has combat training, I imagine most Federation citizens do, <laughs> you know, with uh, all, the, all the invasions that tend to happen in this universe. But I also like that her reaction after she has used it is contemplative and, oh dear, you know, <laughs> I've just shot someone, maybe it's on stun. Um, I will say, though, this is the third time in as many episodes where the script's response to characters finding out answers is a bunch of is a bunch of Romulan spies turn up, start shooting out the place, and are then all killed. Um, I'm calling this phenomenon exit pursued by a Romulan. Look, I'm just hoping it's not something the series keeps doing. It's just getting silly at this point. It's also a bit silly to leave behind Laris and her husband, I think. You know, they're taking the gamble that Picard is the only target, but Picard is obviously very fond of them. And if there are Romulan operatives on Earth, okay, Laris and her husband can look after themselves. I'm saying her husband because I keep forgetting his name. Um, but they obviously can look after themselves, but why take the risk? Why not take them with them? Like, I know, I know the harvest needs to be done, but there are slightly more important things, possibly. Um, Plus, I just really quite like them as characters. It would be nice to have them about. But that's the direction they've chosen to take. <sighs> Meanwhile, on the ball cube, it's Hugh. Hugh's back. Um, look, I knew he was coming back. I'd already heard about this. Walking past some people. I'd already heard about this. And I am really happy to see Jonathan Delarco back. The thing I immediately recognised about him, because of course he no longer has the necrotic look of the old Borg, he no longer has his eyepiece, he's got a new eye, 
the thing I immediately recognised was Hugh's walk. And I haven't seen much of Jonathan Del Arco's other work, so I don't know if that's just his walk. <laughs> but that's what I immediately recognised as the same character. But much like Patrick Stewart as Picard, he's believably grown and changed over the last 20 years. And whereas in Descent, you know, he was slightly resentful of his newfound individuality, it's kind of poetic that he is helping others regain their individuality now. It brings the character full circle. And we've only seen him for one episode. There's more to come. The mystery, the mystery of Soji is an interesting one. Because we think we know everything about her. You know, we think we know she's a synth. Maddox has created her. She may have come from Data's engrams. But there seems to be an additional mystery around her, including the fact that she has a gift for languages, but she doesn't know necessarily where the words come from. Uh, Narek's sister has also turned up. Um, I wonder what her Romulan name is. You know, I doubt, I doubt her Romulan name is Rizzo, but Narek's sister has turned up on the cube, doesn't really do much except to kind of say, hi, I'm here. Probably could have done without that scene. Um, but there's also Soji's slow realisation that there is something unusual about her. And yeah, it looks like Narek is going to manipulate her in that as well. Um, finally, Picard gets on board the ship. In the lead up to that, I quite liked the scene with him and Refi. I know I mentioned last week I was hoping that whatever involvement they had, it was a colleague relationship rather than a romantic relationship, but that certainly seems to be the case here. I'm very clearly seen in the flashback at the beginning of the episode, Refi idolises Picard. They've obviously worked together on this evacuation scheme for a long time, and she greatly respects him, and that comes across. It, it even comes across in the scenes where she's telling him to go, telling him to leave, and Picard kind of trying to negotiate with her, but then dropping his diplomat self and admitting his own emotional reaction to the situation and apologising just leads to some really strong scenes. And what I particularly like, because taking the at surface level, I kind of thought, wow, you know, is this schism just based on the fact that the evacuation plan didn't work? And even she lost her security clearance and had to leave Starfleet. But no, it's not that. It's based on the fact that he never even checked in on her. And she gets that, you know, he was hiding. He was hiding away and hurt himself. But how bad must it be for your subordinate who didn't have your long and illustrious career to have that future they had mapped out for themselves taken away from them? Now, of course, Refi comes along at the end. We know we ha we know that she has her own agenda, and she may not be around for the whole series. I really hope she is, though. I'm enjoying her performance. Agnes also joins in, and straight away, we get that very quick scene at the end that shows us how different these characters are from one another, and <laughs> speculates kind of on how they'll interact. Agnes seems to be a little bit scared of Refi, but a little bit in awe of her as well. Refi, meanwhile, <laughs> does not like not having someone with having someone without security clearance along. Um, but I mean, I don't think Agnes is a spy. Ooh, what if Agnes is a synth? Ooh, you know, I have no evidence of this, but what if? Uh, also, Michael Chabon, uh, one of the writers and I believe executive producers, has. Um, answered some questions on his Instagram, including why is Commodore O wearing sunglasses? Because long-time Trek fans will know that Romulans have... Oh! wind. Romulans have a sort of... Not Romulans, Vulcans have an inner eyelid uh, to protect them from harmful sun rays, basically. So why would she need sunglasses? And, well, maybe it's because she's a Romulan, and Romulans don't have this third eyelid. Who knows? I believe it is also a tribute to uh, 
uh, I believe a French actress whose name I've forgotten, who appears in a similar way in a film. Um, I did read that as part of this commentary, but name escapes me, I do apologise. But yeah, look, all in all, it is a strong episode. I hope we start getting a bit more action though. I feel like we've established most of the main characters. I think there's one more to come. Um, and yeah, just so long as we can continue the story a bit faster, <laughs> I won't mind these three episodes of setup so much. But what do you think? Let me know down there in the comments. I uh, am actually going to be back with another video on this week's Doctor Who, Can You Hear Me? Uh, before next week's episode, just because I've had so many more thoughts since I reviewed it this morning. And um, I think it's an episode definitely worthy of more discussion. So I'll be back with that later this week. Don't forget to leave your Picard comments below and do give me a thumbs up, share and subscribe. It all helps. We're up to, I think, 718 subscribers. I don't think I'm going to get to my <laughs> live stream target by the Doctor Who finale, but hey, who knows? In any case, it's not, qu it's not quantity, it's quality. And I have some very quality subscribers and some very quality comments as well. So thank you all very much for watching.